Hello everyone and welcome to PHP 101, a new series I'm doing teaching you PHP from the ground up. So what is PHP? Well, it stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. As you can tell uh, from the name, you can already tell how powerful it is, as the first P actually stands for PHP, so it's an infinite loop. Um, it's a web-based server-side scripting language. Um, quite similar to Ruby or ASP, they're all the same sort of level. It's loosely typed, which means for every variable call you do, uh, you don't have to say what type it is. Um, unlike Java, where you have to actually say what type everything is, uh, with PHP you don't, so that makes it a lot easier to learn. Um, it's completely free, it's completely open source as well, so you can actually go into the PHP website all the documentation is there, you can download PHP straight from there, and you can even edit it straight from there as well. And it's the most popular web-based server scripting language at the moment. Uh, this could change with the invention of Ruby, um, but it's not likely. I'm still a PHP fan. And of course, because it's a back-end script, it requires a server to run it, which is known as a web server. So, quick history on PHP. It was created by a guy called Rasmus Lerdorf in 1994. He wanted to generate the output from pre-built templates. Basically, he was creating some sites for clients, and he got fed up of having to code all the HTML headers again and again and again. He wanted to make one page, which was the template, which would create the whole site for him. So he went off and developed PHP. Um, here's a little quote from him. He actually hates programming, Rasmus Lerdorf, which is quite funny considering he developed a programming language. Uh, so, it's a bit weird. So how does it work? Well, PHP generates the HTML for the web page uh, based on your instructions that you place in the PHP file. So, when somebody requests it, it gets sent to the server, then the server looks at the file and goes, oh, it's a PHP file, I'll send this to PHP. PHP then looks at it and goes, oh, I'm going to generate the HTML for this. And outputs the HTML back to the browser for the user to see. So really, it's it's kind of like a middleman uh, which generates the HTML for you. So these are the topics we're going to cover in this in this series. We can do variables, which we're actually going to do today, which would be great. Uh, we're going to do arrays, um, which is quite nice to use. We're going to use comparison statements, loops, Sessions and cookies, which is interesting as well. Um, that's how you store user logins. We're going to look into that. Functions, processing forms, so like a login form or an email form. Date handling, include and require. Emailing via PHP. Error handling. Object oriented PHP using classes and objects. And PDO, database connectivity. Um, and I'm sure you've heard of MySQL underscore connect. That's now been deprecated in PHP, so you have to use PDO now. So I'm going to teach you how to switch from MySQL connect to PDO, how to use PDO. Um, and we're going to do a little project at the end. Uh, well, we're going through step by step and we'll be making an app of some sort, just a little one really, just to really apply the knowledge that you've learned um, and see if you can you can do the code. So you'll need a web server or your computer with a web server installed. I'll be using my this Mac that I'm using here. And you can use XAMP. I think that's how you pronounce that. I don't know how you pronounce that. Uh, or MAMP. I'll be using MAMP on this. But you can use either as long as it's running, as long as it uses PHP. Um, I'll be using PHP version 5.3.5. You may have newer than this or you may have older. Um, a lot of the stuff I'll be covering will work. I will usually tell you otherwise if it doesn't work in a certain version. And for the database stuff we'll be doing later on in the series, you'll need a MySQL database. That's what we'll be using. And some sort of coding editor of your choice, which I'll be using Sublime Text 2, which isn't free, but works on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, it's quite good. There is a free version. You can try it out. Um, which is good. Uh, uh, you've also got editors like Notepad++, which is free, and TextMate, which is for the Mac, which isn't free. Uh, there's quite a few out there, so if you've got one that you like using, then best to use what you know. So what should you already know? Well, you should know HTML and CSS. 
Um, if you don't, then you really need to go and learn that first because this is going to be way too advanced for you. You need to know the basics of publishing a website to a web server, how you get those websites to be public on a URL. Uh, so that'd be great. And optional, JavaScript to Java. PHP follows a lot of the same t syntax as JavaScript or Java. So if you already know those, you're already on to a winner. So let's get started. Okay, so I want to go over to my HT Docs folder. I've added it to my sidebar, but you'll have to go and hunt for it. I'll be using MAMP. Um, let's create a new folder for this. Uh, let's call it, what should we call it? The web feed. Let's go into there. And I'm going to call this PHP 101. And this is ep one, episode 1. So I'm going to drag that straight into my Sublime so I can edit it here. Okay. So first off, once you've got it in your editor, once you've got a folder in your HDDocs, you need to start your server. So I'm going to be using MAMP, so I'm going to hit that. Um, you can also use XAMP as well. Uh, so you need to start Apache, make sure it's running. This should start it automatically for me. Yeah, you see Apache is running and it will start MySQL as well, so I can get started with that. Let's just hide that. Okay, so here is our blank screen, so you need to create a new file. Uh, you can do this in the Finder or Explorer if not Windows, but I'm just going to do it out of Sublime Text 2 here. And I'm going to save this by doing Command S, and I'm going to call it index. So it's a lot like your index.html, um, just with a PHP, your, just with a PHP extension. Um, your script has to have .php at the end. It can have .php3 or .php4, but those are old. They're deprecated, so just just leave it as .php for now. Hit save. <coughs> There's our file. Here it is in the editor. So, to start coding your PHP, you have to use some tags. Like in HTML, you would do this, and you'd have your head and your body and etc. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in PHP, you have to do a less than sign, a question mark, PHP. Do a couple of returns and then end it off by doing question mark and a greater than sign. So here is our starter PHP script. So what might be useful to you is to change the syntax that your editor is using. Um, in Sublime, you can do this down in the corner here. You change it so it PHP is selected there. And then when we type, all the colors will be correct. Um, or should be. You see those are different colors. So that's telling me that's correct. Okay, so variables. What is a variable? Think of a variable like a little box that you can store data in. So for example, so, so basically it's like a little box, you give it a name and when you request that name it tells you what's in the box. Um, so for example, let's do, you start off your variable with a dollar and it can be anything really um, you can include underscores, you can't include other characters. You see this is highlighting it in red or purple. My sublime, so it's telling me that that's wrong at the moment. Um, you can't use certain characters. Obviously you can't use dollar in it because you've used dollar, you have to use dollar at the beginning, but you can't use dollar inside it. You can use underscores, you can't use spaces. As you can see, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, that's highlighting it in purple. So Sublime's actually telling me that's not correct. Um, but by convention, most people use camel case, which looks like this, where your first word has a lowercase letter at the beginning, and every word after it, you take out the space and you capitalize the next letter. So for this, I'm going to put first name. And that's how you do it in camel case. And I'm going to put my name in there. This is a string. If um, there'll be a video coming soon of basis into programming um, that'll explain what I mean by string uh, this is a string it has my name in it and so let's hit save now to view your MAMP or server open your browser I'm going to use Chrome for this you can use any browser it doesn't really matter and make sure going to hide that. Make sure you go to localhost forward slash and the folder name. 
So I'm going to do PHP 101. Uh, we put it in PHP 101. I oh, know we didn't. We put it in the web feed first. PHP 101, F1. And because it's the index, that'll be what's displayed. This is our file. And you can see we have no output. Uh, if we view source, source is also empty. So, why is this? Well, what we've done here is we've told PHP to store the word James inside dollar first name. Fortunately, it stores it, doesn't do anything else with it. We haven't told it to do anything else. So to output it onto the page, we have to use the word echo, which is how you output something. That's turned blue to tell me that's correct, and that's a function. That's what blue means. And so I can give it first name and end it with a semicolon. You must end each line with a semicolon in, in PHP, each statement. Um, there are exceptions to that, which I'll be going over in this series. So if we save that again, and refresh the browser, in the browser rather, ah, you see I've got an error. This is what a PHP error looks like. It says I've got an undefined variable, first name, in my file here, it's the location of it, on line number 8. So you can go into editor, line 8. You can see that here I haven't capitalised the letter N. Uh, these variable names are case sensitive. So you have to be careful of that. Hit refresh, there you go, there's my name. And if I change it to John and hit reload, there it is again. So with this, we can do what's called a string concatenation. A string concatenation basically puts two, two um, strings together. Um, so I can do, just change this. So let's create a last name on here. And say we wanted to output both the first name and last name, we could do this, but of course, there's no space in the middle. So how do you put a space in? Well, we can actually do it all on one line. So I can do this. You see, in Java, or in JavaScript, you would use the plus sign to concatenate. In PHP, it's not the plus sign, it's a dot, which you can put spaces with as well. So you do space dot space. I'm going to put a space in there and then put in the last name. So what I've done here is this string here is hello, comma, and then a space. And then I've done a concatenate to the first name, concatenate to another space, which is a string by the quotes. You can tell it's a string. A space dot space, and then the last name. So if we hit refresh, hello, James King is there. And if I change these, can't spell, it's terrible. That will now say hello John Matthews. And that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I've just given you a quick tour of where it was. Actually, let's do an age. This is how you do variables for strings. But for numbers, you don't put it in quotes. That's a no-no. That will just treat it as a string. So I can do age 20 there. That's how you do it as an integer, you just put the number in uh, without quotes, because that's a string, but that's an integer. So we can actually do math on that. Um, so if, uh, oh actually I shouldn't show you that yet, <laughs> that's for a later episode. But yes, this is how you store a number or an integer in a variable, PHP. So I'm going to add this onto here. You are, and you can concatenate it in, in the same way. And that should now display, hello James King, you are 20 years old, because that number there is stored here. And I'm going to call that there for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be looking at, um, I don't actually know, we'll be looking at arrays. Quinton topics here. We're looking at arrays next, and hopefully that will help you out with your scripts in the future. Um, this file will be available in the description below as a download if you really want it. Um, I'm going to put it on pastebin.com, which is so I can paste it line by line so you can have a look. And um, please hit the like button if you like this episode and subscribe to see more of the series. Um, thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you soon.